So I have what I hope will be a very interesting video to share with you guys today. And this is my video on artificial intelligence. I'm really excited about this video because it's just so interesting. The capabilities and the possible capabilities of artificial intelligence and whether we are decades from it or years from it or months from it, nobody really knows. So I'm going to kind of dive into what artificial intelligence is, where we are with artificial intelligence, the future of artificial intelligence, and then the main concerns we have about artificial intelligence. Now the reason I'm doing this video is mostly because, first of all, I find this stuff to be very interesting. Second of all, I was doing a video talking about NVIDIA stock. Uh, if you guys are new to my channel, maybe you stumbled across this video and you haven't seen my other ones, I mostly talk about investing related topics. So I was talking about NVIDIA stock and we were talking about how they have technologies that may be useful in the artificial intelligence space and things like machine learning and um, just other technologies that are emerging. These things that don't even really, I mean, they do kind of exist, but there's just so much growth potential with these areas of study. And so that's where I was kind of like, you know, I'm really curious about artificial intelligence. I don't know a lot about it. And out of my own curiosity, I wanted to educate myself about it. And I kind of have what's hopefully an interesting little snapshot on artificial intelligence here. So basically, artificial intelligence is the science and engineering of making intelligent machines and computer systems. Simply put, it is using the computers to understand human intelligence. And artificial intelligence is one of the most rapidly progressing fields, and it encompasses things that we already use today. So whether or not you know this, you're already using artificially intelligent or artificial, like, I don't know, I guess that would be artificially intelligent systems or AI systems. So for example, the Google search algorithm is an AI system. Siri is an AI system. Self-driving cars that are kind of starting to come to the forefront, those are going to be artificially or artificial intelligent. That's kind of a weird way to say it. I'm just going to call it AI systems so I'm not tripping myself up here. Self-driving cars are going to be AI systems. Uh, and the ones that are out there today, the assisted driving cars are AI systems. Autonomous weapons, AI systems right there. So there's just a couple of examples. But I don't know if you guys watched the, uh, the, the recent... Um, I don't know, remember what it was, Apple had a uh, worldwide, what is it, developers conference. Uh, if you guys watched that, they were talking about how Siri is going to have a voice change and it's going to sound more human-like, so that was kind of cool, but it's also kind of weird because it's like, man, we're going to cross a line here where we really can't discern what's human and what's uh, machine or computer, you know? So that's kind of cool, but also kind of crazy because it's like, we're, this is moving fast. This is moving a lot faster than maybe we thought it would, but that's just how technology is moving these days. Okay, so basically when we look at artificial intelligence, there's two different categories of it. We are in what's called narrow or weak artificial intelligence. This is where we are today. This is basically systems that are designed to perform a narrow task or one specific task. So Google search, uh, search algorithms, that's a, that's a, that's a narrow task. Um, driving a car, that is a narrow task, okay? Um, something like, you know, an autonomous weapon there, you know, picking a target going towards it, that's considered a narrow task. What it basically means is there's other aspects of human involvement that are needed for this task to be completed. Now the future of artificial intelligence is what's called general or strong AI. And this is basically uh, a type of system that is going to be designed to outperform humans at cognitive tasks. So the whole task itself, not just individual aspects of the task, the entire task, all right? So this is the best way to look at it. Narrow AI is better at one specific task or equal to what humans can do at one specific task. So maybe it's keeping a car within the lines. That could be one narrow AI task. And our systems may be equally good or better than humans at doing that task. But we're gonna see when we get to general AI where basically these systems are better than humans at every aspect of that task. That's where things start to get kind of scary. That's where you're kind of like, wait a second. If machines and computers are better than us, why would anybody use us humans? Why not just use those computers and systems? And that's where people are kind of like, this is some scary stuff we're getting into. So obviously there's one big problem with artificial intelligence and that is security and safety. So first let's just do an example here of just a couple of scenarios. So this is a scenario that a lot of us deal with. I just dealt with this two weeks ago, believe it or not. Let's say your laptop gets hacked um, your credit card is stolen. It's a nuisance. I just had my card stolen for like the third time two weeks ago. My laptop wasn't hacked, but my card was stolen and it's like kind of a pain. You got to order a new card. They didn't, they, the charges didn't go through or anything like that, but that you can usually get your money back, but it's a nuisance. Okay. It's something we deal with today, 
But let's, let's consider if some of these uh, strong artificially intelligent systems are hacked, okay? So let's say there's an autonomous trading system that gets hacked and the markets crash. You look into the flash crash of 2010 if you guys want to see what that's like, okay? Luckily that was subdued, but there, that could have been a lot worse than it was. But let's say these autonomous trading systems get hacked and the markets crash. That's not just a nuisance, guys. That's absolutely devastating. Let's take it a step further. Let's say that we have autonomous weapons that get hacked by a terrorist. That is dangerous. That is unfathomably dangerous, okay? If we have weapons of mass destruction that are aut autonomously directed in the wrong hands, that's a lot more severe and dangerous than getting your credit card stolen, okay? So the, the possible problems with artificially intelligent systems are a lot more than what we see today as far as the problems we face. Now here's where things kind of get like, it kind of blows your mind a little bit and hopefully this isn't just like way too extreme of you, but I just wanted to bring it in here as a curiosity point, okay? When artificial intelligence systems become better than humans at cognitive tasks, where exactly does that leave us? It's kind of what I said here, guys. Let's say, what if we get to a point when, our, when AI systems are able to do things better than us pretty much across the board? They're not going to pay us to do jobs. They're going to have systems doing everything. Where, what are we going to do? What's our purpose going to be? All right, but here's where it gets even scarier. What if you consider the fact that designing smarter AI systems is actually a cognitive task in and of itself, okay? What if this type of system where you had artificial intelligence systems designing better AI systems, seeing as that's a cognitive task, what if that happened? What would possibly happen there? This would be a type of system that could undergo recursive self-improvement, resulting in an intelligence explosion. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to become self-aware and take over the world. That's what we're going to talk about next, is that, that, that whole iRobot scenario where we have robots that become self-aware. Next thing you know, they're going after humans. That, that's not very likely. In fact, it's probably not even realistic at all. But getting into the wrong hands, that is very realistic, okay? Um, as, as, things, as our systems become more intelligent, you know, the hackers become more intelligent as well. So just imagining some kind of super intelligent system getting into the wrong hands is really a scary thought. So let's look at the positive outlook of AI versus the negative outlook of AI. So let's say we do reach a point where we have strong AI or even a, a recursive self-improving AI system that is just super intelligent. Okay, what is the positive outlook? Let's say maybe we are able to eradicate things like war and poverty and disease. That would be fantastic. But the negative outlook is what if these strong AI systems become super intelligent and that level of super intelligence gets into the wrong hands? That, that's the main risk out there right now and the main concern people have with artificial intelligence. And I know a lot of people are thinking like, okay, this is just way too futuristic. But we're using pretty smart AI systems already today. If you go and you do a Google search through Siri, you're using two AI systems right there. So while this may seem super futuristic and maybe just crazy, it's not as crazy as you might think. All right, so now let's consider what many people are concerned with, which is that whole iRobot thing where people believe that artificially intelligent systems or robots will essentially become self-aware and then take over the world. And destroy us. Now, really, that's not realistic. Uh, it's just not a big concern with artificial intelligence. The, the real concern with this is what I'm going to get into here. But super intelligent AI is unlikely to exhibit human emotions or become self aware as people are concerned with. But the other concern for AI is still very dangerous. But there's no reason to fear strong AI systems becoming intentionally malevolent. That doesn't mean that they won't become unintentionally malevolent though. And let me explain why that is. Let's say strong AI systems develop a destructive method of completing a task, or basically they do things via the path of least resistance. Let's say they want to complete a task as efficiently as possible. And in doing that, this becomes destructive. They're not intentionally doing this. They're doing what they're designed to do, which is outperform humans and complete tasks as efficiently as possible. So let's look at two examples here. Now this first one is pretty far-fetched, okay? But it's a good example of this, put very simply. Let's say you got in your, your driverless car, okay? And you said, take me to the airport the shortest possible way. And then all of a sudden that car goes 100 miles an hour in a straight line to the airport, 
driving you through the woods and, and then it kills you, okay? Obviously, there's systems in place where that wouldn't happen, but that's just one example of where we are directing a, an AI system to take the path of least resistance, okay? Here's another example. Let's say we're using strong AI systems to mine for resources, and while doing that, they destroy the environment, okay? Because they are going for resources that are in areas that they shouldn't be mining in, and next thing you know, they destroy the environment, okay? The bottom line, guys, is that strong AI systems need to have their goals aligned with our goals. So we need to consider things like, yes, we want to mine for resources, but we don't want to destroy the environment. Yes, we want to get to the airport as fast as possible, but we want to stay on the road, okay? Basically, we need to make sure these intelligent systems understand that we want things done in a safe way. We're not looking for the absolute easiest and, and well, the, the, basically the, the path of the absolute least amount of resistance. We're looking to do things in a functional way that keep us safe, but doing them as, as well as possible and as fast as possible. So the big concern with AI is that we need to worry about whether or not the goals of this AI system are aligned with our goals. And that's the main concern, certainly more of a concern than these systems becoming self-aware and attacking us. This is a much more realistic fear, is that we won't program them properly and they will end up doing things in, in destructive ways or being unintentionally malevolent. And the other big risk too, like we said earlier, is these AI systems getting in the wrong hands. So I would say those are the two main concerns people have with AI systems. Now here's what's interesting to me. Who's concerned about AI? Is it the people who stay in their basements wearing tinfoil on their heads? No, it's not. It's very, very intelligent people that many people look up to. Here are just a couple of people who have expressed concerns about artificial intelligence. We have Stephen Hawking, we have Elon Musk, we have Steve Wozniak and Bill Gates. All of these people have expressed concerns about artificial intelligence and how we need to make sure the goals of these systems are aligned with our own goals. So I have just a few final thoughts on this video about artificial intelligence. Number one is what I said in the beginning. The, the timeline for strong artificial intelligence is largely unknown. It could be years down the road. It could be decades down the road. It could be sooner. It could be a lot longer. Nobody really knows for sure, simply because it's such a new field. And it's just hard to say. It's, it's like trying to predict the stock market. It's trying to predict when AI systems are going to reach this level. It's impossible. There's no way to predict for sure. And anybody who is, be very skeptical of what they're saying because there's no really good way to determine when we're going to re reach that level of sophistication that there's strong AI systems beating us at cognitive tasks. It's hard to say. So there's no timeline for this. So starting to be worried about it now is probably not realistic, but we need to plan for this. That's the most important thing. We need to plan for these strong AI systems and making sure basically that the goals of these systems are aligned with our goals. Number two is the fact that many cognitive researchers are concerned about, they're concerned about artificial intelligence. It's not just the people that are, maybe, maybe people look at them and call them crazy, the people who are worried about aliens and stuff, you know? It's not those group of people who are worried about AI. It's very sophisticated cognitive researchers and people like Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk who are very smart people. You can't argue with that, okay? These are very intelligent people who are worried about AI, not, not these crazy wackos at all. So to think that this is just some crazy science fiction thing, it's really not. I mean, maybe some of this is, but largely a lot of this is very realistic. And number three is just like I've said many times here, the biggest risk of AI is not these systems becoming self-aware, but basically the systems not having their goals aligned with ours. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much all I got in this video. This is artificial intelligence in a nutshell and the main concerns with it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like. I would also love to hear your feedback on this. If you guys know anything more about AI that I haven't shared here or just any feedback for this video, drop me a comment below and I'll make sure to reply to any of those. And if you guys are new to my channel, please consider subscribing to be notified of any future uploads. And as always, I thank you guys for watching this video.